assalamu alaikum dear students in this video we will be talking about product moments covariance and then by the end of lecture we will be talking about the expectation and variance of linear combination of random variables uh, if you when we were talking about these product moments we spoke about those moments about origin and about mean and uh, if you remember r th power with respect to the first variable x and s th power with respect to the second variable y and if we go by that so if i consider expectation of e x y this is for with first power this is so called mu 1 1 dash this is nothing but this mu 1 1 dash and we proved that this covariance of x y is equal to mu 1 1 dash minus mu x mu y and this is expectation of x expectation of y and uh, we will prove that if x uh, we will prove this theorem that if x and y are independent then expectation of x e expectation of x y is equal to the product of expectations of x and product of expectation of uh, expectation of x times expectation of y and we will prove that if they are independent then this covariance is zero in order to prove that we consider the discrete case and the continuous case is very similar and for discrete case we use summation for continuous case we will be using integral and everything else stays the same so this expectation of x y this is these two summations one is one with respect to x the second with respect to y x y times this joint probability distribution and we already know that when x and y are independent random variable then this f of x y becomes g of x times h of y where g of x is the marginal distribution of x and h of y is the marginal distribution of y so by the property of random variable this f of x is, can be written like this okay now when we have this uh, summation x summation y x y g of x h of y then now you will note that if we will group together x and g of x y and h of y then they are independent and we can divide and make two some these separate summations and we can multiply them so because of uh, the not involvement of uh, y in the uh, related to first summation and not involvement of x with respect to second summation we can write them as these products and this first summation is expectation of x and the second sum uh, is the expectation of y so we can see that mu 1 1 dash when x and y are independent variable this becomes expectation of x expectation of y so we are done with the first bit and now we want to prove that this covariance is zero so this summation xy is expectation of x expectation of y which is actually this mu 1 1 dash minus this mu of x mu of y and this is as you know this is expectation of x expectation of y so these are two similar entries and expectation of x expectation of y by subtracted from itself gives us zero okay so that means if x and y are independent random variable we have a very clear expect uh, clear expression for the expectation and we also know that the covariance is zero and now do we we do one example where we will have the covariance is zero and even then x and y will not be independent and how will we identify that they are independent we will try to prove this so first we will compute this uh, covariance of x y and then we will in order to show that they are independent we must show that this f of x y is equal to g of x h of y this is the marginal distribution of the random variable x and this is the marginal uh, distribution of the random variable y so in order to compute this uh, sigma x y which is the covariance so I'll we will be using this formula and in order to apply this formula we need to compute mu 1 1 dash and when we compute this mu 1 1 dash this mu 1 1 dash is as I said earlier this is expectation of x y 
So we'll do what? We'll be using xy and times f of xy. And we will be having two summations. So in order to handle that, we compute this uh, mu of x, mu of y, and we'll be using them later. And to begin with, we compute this mu 1 1 dash. Now please see this first entry corresponds to x, this second entry corresponds to y. So when x is minus 1 and y is minus 1, we will be f of x, y is 1 by 6. So we will have minus 1, minus 1 and multiplied by 1 by 6. When x is minus 1, y is 0. When x is minus 1, y is 0, f of x, y is 0. So this whole expression will vanish, this will become 0. When x is minus 1, y is 1, f of x, y is 1 by 6. And we continue the pattern, then when x is 0, y is minus 1, f of minus f of 0 and minus 1, this we get this value and actually this will become 0. So I'll not bother it, this will also become 0 and this will also become 0. And if we if I talk about the last column, when x is 1, y is minus 1, f of x, y is 1 by 6, plus when x is 1, y is 0, f of x, y is 0, and plus when x is 1, y is 1, this is 1 by 6, and if I simplify it out, this, this becomes 0, this becomes 0, this entry becomes 0, this becomes 0, this becomes 0, so we are left with 1 by 6 from here, minus 1 by 6 from here, minus 1 by 6 from here and plus 1 by 6 from here and we see that this sigma x this mu 1 1 dash this becomes 0 now so that means we have computed this much this part okay now we do what we need the values of mu of x mu of y so when we compute this mu of x now we will be using the marginal distribution so corresponding to this minus 1 corresponding to this minus 1 this is g of 1 so this is 1 by 3 plus when x is 0, this g of 1, 0 is 1 by 3 and when x is 1, this is g of 1 and this is 1 by 3. So when we add, this becomes minus 1 by 3, this is 0 plus 1 by 3, so this sums up to 0. And when we compute this mu of y, when we compute this mu of y, when x is minus 1, correspondingly g of minus 1 is 2 by 3. When y is 0, correspondingly g of 0 is 0, plus when x, y is 1, g of 1 is 1 by 3, so this sums up to 1, minus 1 by 3. And now when I plug in these values, mu of x is 0, and mu of y is minus 1 by 3, so this whole expression becomes 0. And from here we conclude that this sigma x, y is 0. Now we need to verify that f of x y is not equal to g of x h of y because if they are equal then that is a guarantee that x and y are independent but if they are not equal then we will say that x and y are not independent so in order to do that this has to be true for all values of x and y which are which can which the random variable can assume so this x it must be uh, for all values of x and y. So if this capital X assume any value x over here and this capital Y assume any value y, this expression has to stay true. Now when x is minus 1 and y is minus 1, okay now please look when x is minus 1, y is minus 1, we get the answer 1 by 6. When g of minus 1, g of minus 1 is 1 by 3 and h of minus 1 Now this h of minus 1 is 2 by 3. So this is 2 by 3 and when we multiply them, we get the answer 2 by 9. And over here we have the answer 1 by 6 and they are not equal. And from here we conclude that the random variables involved are not independent. So we are done with this bit. So that means even if covariance is 0, even then we don't have the guarantee that x and y are independent variables. And now very, very quickly, when 
we state a result that if x1 to xn are independent variables, then this expectation of this product is equal to the product of expectations. And you can prove this by using very simple induction. You, we can continue the process we took for two variables, then three, and then so on. So this is natural. I will skip this. Now I come to the linear combination. So if x1 to xn are random variables, then we define a new random variable which is obtained by linear combination of these random variables. These are constants, a1, pn are constants. Then expectation of x. This is very simple. We know the properties of expectation. We already know that expectation of ax is equal to aex. And this is something routine. So we will not be going into this. And when we will be talking about variance of y, that is this expression. This is little tricky. This is a big summation, so i from 1 to n, ai, and this is variance of xi's. So this is a summation about those variances of the random variables plus two times this summation. And this i has to stay less than j, ai, aj, and then product of this covariance of xy, no, sorry, xi and xj. And obviously this ij are from 1 to n and we will impose the condition that i stays less than n as far as this summation is concerned. Okay, so expectation is the easier part, I will skip it and we will be jumping into the variance of y and we already know this variance of y is expectation of y minus expectation of y this whole scale and we will simply do what we will instead of y we will place this big summation and expectation of y over here we place the other summation which is actually the first part of this theorem. Now what we do is we collect this uh, a we take this a i out and we use this summation and we are left with x i minus mu i and this whole square stays. So this summation a i oh, this is at both places and we are left with x i minus expectation of x i. So this expectation of x i is actually mu i. So in order to simplify the expression I write mu i and this whole square and this expectation stays out. Now this is equivalent to opening up a big scale. Now please note this is equivalent to open up a big scale and I will write it for you just to get going. For instance, if I take this x1 plus x2 plus x3 and I take this whole square, this is x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square and then you will have what? You will have 2x1 x2 plus 2x1 x3 plus 2x2 x3. Now please note when I will like to write this summation for the first three terms I will be writing x i square i is from 1 2 3 and what will happen for these three terms. Now I will be using two summations x i and x j and please note that this, this first label is smaller than the second. So I will impose the condition that I a, this first entry is lesser than the second one. But now what happens? So that, that means I will be having term x1, x2. I will be having this product. But what about and I need 2 as well. So I will put 2 on this side. So you know if I open this up, I is less than j and from 1 to 3. So now you will, when you open it up, you will have all these terms. And I will be taking this very simple concept to this result. Now please note that this becomes a i square and x i take by using the property of expectation, I take this out plus 2. And over here, when I apply for the, for the terms which have different indices, like in this case, x1, x2, x1, x3, so these terms x i minus mu i, x j minus mu j and a i a j and I need to put 2 over here exactly as I do in this open, in this expression when I open this uh, trilogy. And 
over here please note that this expression becomes a i square variance of x i plus 2 and this double summation i is less than j and this becomes a i a j covariance of x i x j and this this term gives us nothing but the covariance this term gives us nothing but the covariance so this all this includes few computations and when we are dealing with these computations you need to do it by yourself and if your problems persist i am ready to respond to your questions so in this video i stop here thank you